Hey, I'm Jiso, and welcome back to yet another God of War Ragnarok video. So, this isn't going to be your typical build video. This is most likely going to be me telling you the story of how I turned Drop Near the Spear into a shotgun. Actually, no, into a stun gun. So, stick around, drop a like, subscribe for more content like those, hopefully, and let's dive into the video. So listen, you might be looking at my defense right now and going nuts, like who needs that much defense? Nobody. But I'm doing some um I'm doing some some experiments right now, trying to see where the soft caps for some stats are. So don't mind it. Don't mind my defense. Just keep in mind that you want to have the stained bone armor set equipped and I just messed around a little bit with the with the enchantments just to get my defense high while also benefiting from this Svedenheim enchantment set. That's why you may see that I'm only benefiting from one set and everything else is just defense, defense, defense. And whenever you're making a stun build, to be honest, you never want to go full defense. You want to go defense like 75% of the way and then strength 25% of the way because you want to capitalize whenever enemies are stunned because you don't want to not deal enough damage. So. As I was saying, I was making some adjustments, trying to see where the soft caps for some stats are. And I was just going from 800 all the way to 600. And I just kept putting everything I could to get enough defense. That's why I'm way past 800, more than anybody would ever need. But just keep in mind, this isn't optimal yet. The Mighty Stun build isn't optimal yet, but this one is a close one. Except you don't deal as much damage as I would like to. But the highlight of this video is actually the grape I'm using for Drobnir, which is the Lion's Rose Sarator. Stunning Blast greatly increases the stun damage of the Gale Force skill R2 plus R2. So, let me tell you something. I actually slept on that one skill a lot because he wasn't doing much, but upon using this one grip, whoo, it is, it is, it is, it is stunning. And I'm also going to be using Haldra's Charge because it is very good. It is a very, very good running attack and I'm going to tell you why later. But yeah, and also keep in mind that whenever you're going for a stun build, I strongly advise equipping every single running attack which, which, which are actually going to increase the stun damage you deal. Because what's the point to not take advantage of having that much defense? And then again, I don't think the stun you deal with your running attacks are going to scale with your defense but i'm just saying if you're going for a stun build might as well just go all the way when it comes to my shield I always do dauntless shield because the dauntless shield plus plus the round of fortification that's a combo i never thought would work but it works so much that sometimes you won't even need to use drop the to inflict stun it is just stunning i have to say again that combo is just lethal i'm going to show you why when it comes to your person rage go with whatever you feel comfortable using as always when it comes to the relic i like using the hilt of anger valdol <laughs> those names man i just losing that one because we also will be using sonic arrows to inflict even more stun to status affected enemies so yeah just use that one relic and when it comes to freya for the runic summon i prefer using still a harmony because it has lesser cooldown and also it deals a lot of stun can you know immobilize enemies i i just love like using it and when it comes to the accessories sonic sonic and running potency those are the things you want to get to have a good time stunning people and also you want to go in here and mess around with your skills as much as possible especially when it comes to gale force you want that one skill to deal as much stun damage as possible and that's it everything else has been said to stun uh, when possible because some some you know some tokens can only be changed to damage momentum or protection so with that out of the way let's dive into the actual video so first of all this build is focused on defense it means that if you're having a hard time with the boss or some enemies you're going to have an easier time now because look at that defense 800 there is no way you actually might die but if you do it's going to be really hard for them to kill you so yeah definitely use this build if you're having a hard time and yeah that's one thing out of the way next when it comes to that one light relic attack we're using which is Haldra's charge that thing is actually very good 
not only will it siphon an enemy's elements, let's say for example the enemy you're fighting uses um, Bifrost, well now your spear is going to be imbued with Bifrost, which is good, it is really good, but it, it, doesn't only, it doesn't just do that. Whenever you actually use that running attack, it can give you invisibility frames against anything, almost anything, right? As long as you use it properly and time it right, it can parry, it can deflect, and you will never, ever take damage, which is good. It's like that one ring attack which is safe to use, and we kind of wish every single attack was that way, but it is what it is. So, keep in mind that if you want to get out of the tricky situation, you feel like you're going to get hit, just use that skill and boom, you avoid getting hit. Isn't that amazing? I think it is. So it is in your best interest to always try to siphon elements whenever you're using Dropnir. And actually, if you don't know, you just have to press R2 and hold it to be able to siphon an element. And it can go from poison by frost to frost or just uh, fire. Like you can siphon anything except with Gna. For some reason, you cannot siphon any elements from Gna. And I'm I'm thinking maybe it's because she has so many elements, but then it doesn't make sense because so does the king. But that's just, I don't understand how it works. But long story short, whenever you have Daze, which is also one status effect, Daze, which, is, which has been siphoned, if you use one, not only would it increase the amount of stun your spear is going to, to uh, you know, inflict whenever that one element is, is imbued on your spear, but whenever you use Haldra Charge, it is also going to deal massive and massive amount of stun damage. So again, if you want to use, not only do you want to wait for a mo the moment you get, to, you, get to, you get to find yourself in a tricky situation to use Haldra Charge, but you also want to wait for your blade, for your spear to be imbued to use at one skill to increase the amount of stun you can deal to enemies. And whenever you're using the stun build in general, you want to wait for enemies to be afflicted with the sonic status effect before you do anything crazy and it also applies to gale force and all those other skills whenever enemies are afflicted they receive way more stun damage which is very good for us because that's what we're looking for we want to deal as much stun damage as possible now gale force is performed by holding r2 like you are aiming and pressing r2 r2 and the more you hold the stronger the blast is going to be now the crazy thing is Whenever you actually have that one element also imbued to your spear, which in this case is Daze, it is going to deal so much stun damage that you can actually stun people with one blast. Like it is, it is actually the very good shotgun. It's not like a two-shot shotgun knife. Like one shot, boom, stun. That's actually crazy. And it, it works also with the king. Like it was, it was able to deal like what 75% of stun in one blast. Whenever every single, I'll say, conditions are met, that thing can stun people in two blasts. That, that's, that's actually, that's kind of silly. And I love it because this time around, stun is actually a viable, I mean, it is something viable, something you can use, something you can get results from, and I love it. Like, come on, stunning people that fast? Come on, man. And keep in mind that I was dealing with bosses, or actually mini bosses for the most part. So if that can be that effective against bosses, just imagine what it can do to some minions. It's going they're going to be destroyed. Jesus. And I can't wait again. I can't wait for New Game Plus. The only thing I need right now is because I have so many builds to try out. I just need loadouts or presets. Like just give it to me already. So next we have to talk about the shield. So the Dauntless Shield is going to inflict stun, stun damage, whenever you parry and whenever you use Shield Shrek, which is good, like that, that's like two layers of inflicting some stun. But because we're using Fortification as our round, whenever you hold for like what, 3 seconds to 4 seconds your shield, it's going to create some Fortification. Whenever you use Shield Shrek again or just block, there's going to be like some kind of meaning explosion which is going to deal stun afflict stun to enemies and in my in my experience it is so it is so good that you should not sleep on that sometimes you can stun people using two shield strikes all you have to do is just go back hold your shield up and boom when they come you parry or you just hit them i mean or just block and Trust me, it is so good paired with the Dauntless Shield because the Dauntless Shield already does deal so much stun damage, but if you add fortification on, on top of that, it is really, 
really good. Like, truly, I'm getting so much closer to having the perfect stand build. I just need to find a way to balance with strength and try to see what works because, as you can see, whenever enemies are stunned, I'm not dealing enough damage because I'm lacking in strength. But here's a little tip. Whenever you successfully stun enemies and mini bosses and whatnot, you want you don't want to immediately press all three. You want to wait, hit them, and when the bar, the stun bar, is about to get fully depleted, then you want to press to press all three. That way, sometimes you can even kill them in that one sequence. Like right, you stun them, you hit them, and then you press all three, the all three grab to deal even more damage. So just keep that in mind. And as I was saying before, this build isn't optimal yet because I still need to figure out what the soft cap for defense is that way I can start increasing my strength. But as of right now, Gale Force works just like a... It is amazing. You can just charge, hold, and then boom, smash, and then they stand. And that's just... For me, that's personally amazing. It feels like you are an exterminator and you're just trying to, <laughs> trying to get some flies. It's just like you just hold it boom <laughs> it is quite silly and i love it so that's it for the build i mean it's not really a build it's most likely i'm, I'm mostly trying to showcase gear force and how to turn your spear and i mean how to use drop near just a little bit better and i hope you'll be able to also get some benefits from using it i really hope so so thank you guys for watching don't forget to drop a like to subscribe and let me know how this build is going to work out for you i'll see you soon Bye-bye.